Yes, hello, hi, I'm Bob Gimlin. One question involving what is colloquially called Bigfoot regards hibernation. The rationale being that Bigfoot researchers themselves use bear as a comparison to illustrate that a given environment can or cannot support Sasquatch. So by our own logic, if the winter months cannot support this, large omnivore, forcing them to hibernate, then the environment cannot support this, large omnivore during the winter months either. So the question becomes, does Bigfoot hibernate? Well, my response is two-pronged. First is that I do not believe that Sasquatch need to hibernate, as bear do. And second, though there is precedent for Bigfoot to be able to hibernate. Bigfoot's diet and habitat frequently uses black and brown bear as comparisons. The logic behind the bear primate analogy is that the two creatures compete for the same food resources as one another, and have similar dietary requirements, seeing as they are of comparable mass. And bear hibernate, because they are unable to sustain their caloric intake during the winter. Therefore, if the ecology of an environment cannot support black bear during winter months, then it cannot support something like this during the winter months either. And of course, we now know that black bear are by no means confined to the remote places of the world. They can live just about anywhere, as long as they aren't being shot, trapped, snared, or poisoned. Just like Bigfoot, who is the champion of knowing how not to get shot. Without human interference, black bear will go into hibernation in October or November. When they rise from hibernation in March or April, they largely scavenge on animals, mostly ungulates, who die during the winter, as well as easily dispatchable spring newborns. And then, as spring turns to summer, bear transition to large tubers, grasses, dandelions, berries, and aquatic plants, much like moose. And as a note, Moose weigh well in excess of 800 pounds, and require an average of over 9,000 calories a day to survive the winter. Bear may utilize annual fish runs, scavenge, and go after the vulnerable, but the majority of black bear diet consists of various vegetation and nuts. All in all, less than 15% of black bear diet comes from animal protein. Therefore, Bigfoot's diet is less dependent on plant matter carbohydrate than the diet of a bear. 15% of a bear's caloric intake comes from animal protein. Between 40 and 50% of Bigfoot's diet is animal protein. And let me show you why I think so. This is a gorilla. They are exclusive herbivores. Their notable, distended gut is due to the fact that they require an elongated digestive tract to break down fiber-heavy food, which is the only type they consume. This is because gorilla are strictly herbivores. Chimpanzee lack this prominent, extended gut because chimps consume a much higher rate of protein than gorilla, and therefore digestion occurs much faster. To be clear, chimpanzee's diet is less than 3% animal protein, which is still a lot more than zero. So if gorilla consume no animal protein, and chimpanzee consume less than 3% animal protein, what about humans? It used to be thought that prehistoric man, or mankind from the vast majority of our existence, ate around 70% animal protein, which gave rise to the whole paleo diet fad. But isotopic analysis of nitrogen levels in our ancestors' bones show that humans pretty consistently had a diet consisting of 45% animal protein, and that's according to the University of Cambridge. 45% animal protein is more than enough to support big brains and higher thinking, which as their diet suggests, Bigfoot must do. I estimate that between 40 and 50% of Bigfoot's diet is animal protein because they survive the winter where meat is the dominant available resource. So if gorilla have essentially no animal protein in their diet, chimps have less than three, imagine a primate that ate between 40 and 50% animal protein. 
like you and I. As you can gather from this data, a high-protein diet is consistent with a high-functioning brain, which is consistent with what I believe is an Ice Age ape. While the tropic-dwelling great apes are mostly herbivores, chimps only hunt on occasion, yet excel at it. So picture another ape, a bigger one, not an occasional seasonal hunter like chimpanzee or even bear for that matter, but a habitual, consistent predator, consuming a protein-rich diet, as is suggested by the lion's share of reports which lack the extended gut that an herbivorous primate requires for digestion. And this is just one factor, which suggests that Bigfoot is closer to the human side of things, which in turn suggests a degree of intelligence that is surely on par with our own, one that we little know how to deal with. Therefore, Bigfoot does not need to hibernate, because they exhibit the traits of a creature eating large amounts of protein, which coincides with higher brain function, which is consistent with an Ice Age diet, which is consistent with an Ice Age primate. Because the protein really never goes anywhere. Whereas in the tropics, the vegetation never really goes anywhere. Tracking and utilizing the most available energy source is just nature's way. And in this case, vegetation is in perpetual availability. And in this case, the constant energy source is meat. If Bigfoot consumed the same diet as a chimp or a gorilla, or even as bear, dominantly plant carbohydrate, then Patty would have looked considerably more flabby, and would certainly be less mobile, which is not conducive to an elusive animal, but is conducive with a biped. And as a note, it is still the consensus that chimpanzee diet is 3% animal protein. I know someone out there is thinking that it has been recently proven that chimps do hunt. And though this is true, but their diet is still nowhere near high protein. But clearly, apes do hunt. Imagine a much more established and cunning hunting primate. Like man, only different, and probably better in many ways. A hunting primate is important to understand because it essentially means that Bigfoot would have a permanent food source over the winter. And because of this accessibility of a high-protein, annually sustainable diet, I don't think Bigfoot hibernate. I think the effects of a high-protein diet are also apparent in what is typically described. But North America is a place of extremes, and there are areas that Bigfoot allegedly dwell which probably could not sustain a large primate during a harsh winter, and though I think migration is much more likely than hibernation, hibernation is still a distinct possibility with primates. Because we know that some apes do hibernate. The fat-tailed lemur, native only to Madagascar, hibernates during the summer to conserve water, of which there is essentially none. So there is a primate, isolated from other primates, that hibernates. So in the farthest reaches of its range, Bigfoot just might hibernate, just as black bears do not hibernate in the most southern reaches of their range, like this Florida black bear. And as a note, the laws of hibernation are odd. There are strange exceptions and bizarre additions. A prerequisite for the ability to hibernate is the ability to put on weight or store fat, and primates myself included, are better at that than most animals. More evidence of distant human hibernation can be found in about 20% of all people. According to the American Family Physician, almost 20% of people suffer from seasonal affective disorder, also known as SAD, occurs when the days grow shorter, during a time of year which many animals hibernate. Symptoms of SAD are depression, desire to sleep, lethargy, and overeating, which is essentially your body asking you to hibernate. It is likely that SAD is a distant remnant of a time when either we or our ancestors hibernated, like a biological safety net, as if to say, don't bother expending calories, you're not going to find them either way. If Bigfoot exists at all, which I am well in a way convinced they do, then they are obviously extraordinarily intelligent 
as is supported by a high-protein diet, which negates hibernation for the most part, though there is enough data to speculate that they are able to hibernate, or at least maybe partially hibernate, if need be, in the farthest reaches of their range. But set the speculation and science aside for a moment. The overarching reason against Bigfoot hibernation is pragmatism. Any creature is immensely vulnerable during a state of hibernation. Not only are hibernators vulnerable when dormant, but they tend to be quite careless and reckless while gaining the required calories. And this creature I talk so much about is never reckless and never careless because we are looking at a creature whose primary prerogative is to reduce vulnerability. It is their survival strategy, and a smart one at that. So I do not think Bigfoot hibernates. And this is only one of many examples of Bigfoot's overall ecology mirroring our own, just as I believe their intelligence must. Hibernation and dietary comparisons may not be the most stimulating or attention-grabbing of all the information swirling around Bigfoot on the internet, but they are large components of any creature's overall biology, and more often than not, all sums must be understood before an understanding can be gained of the whole. And regarding this creature, quite frankly, I don't think we're even close. But think about something ape-like, which has been consuming a protein-rich, human-like diet for a very, very long time. Human-like attributes would occur, and they would be striking and defining. Because a human-like intelligence, only used in different ways, is one of the most important aspects regarding a North American non-human primate, which is supported by a high-protein diet, which renders hibernation near obsolete. As happened with humans, as I suspect happened with what some call Bigfoot. And regarding the seasons, and me, I have a lot more time on my hands this time of year, so make sure you subscribe to see more, like the video, and as always, thanks an awful lot for listening.